Hello, Pastor Deborah here. Welcome again to another wonderful part of our wonderful series of the King and Kingdom here on the Hidden Kingdoms YouTube channel. This is going to be part number two. We have been working through what is a king? What is leadership? How, you, how do you become a king? And we're going to pick up here in part number two. And I first want to talk about our sword of the spirit that we're to carry. I like to call him Excalibur because a lot of us recognize King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table out of England and Britain. How many warriors, samurai, kung fu had swords? Swords were a powerful part of humanity's history, ancient history. Yeah. So let's talk about what it means to be a king and what a sword means to us. Why do we need a sword? What's the sword about? And we're going to use the example of Excalibur to help us. So let's get started first with prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that you called all of humanity to be kings, to be warriors, to be priests, to be prophets, to be teachers, to be fathers. Out in the realm of the spirit where you are. Teach us about our sword that we're to carry. The sword of the spirit, which we have just called Excalibur to help us. Father, be with us. You showed us this in movies about Julius Caesar. You showed us how important the sword is in battles, how royal and knights would carry it. You taught us about you can use it to place it on our shoulders, to knight us. Father, the sword is important. It's an important piece of our armor that we use out there in the world that's unseen. So teach us in this video about Excalibur. Thank you. The war, what I'm going to teach you is, is from a movie called Merlin, the War of Dragons movie. And it had to deal with Excalibur, the sword. And I was, I'm going to relate it to the sword of God. Maybe the God you pray to. But we all know about ancient history. We've seen the soldiers. We've seen the army. We've seen the sword fights. We've seen the, how important a sword is to winning battles. But yet it can be ceremonial. It can be a sign of a king. It can be given to kings. It is a powerful piece of our armor. If you find yourself in a kingly position. Or you're doing battle. Even in your dreams. The sword is an important part. So number one out of this movie, we want to, the sword was forged and created by its creator. I didn't make the sword. Before man even existed. It had two sides of the sword. They were sharp, beautiful, elegant. And we're taught from this movie that a particular sword, Excalibur, it could cut through the hide, the skin of a dragon. Many of us are fighting dragons in our sleep, in the world, but we don't know it. We feel the flames and the winds of its mouth and its breathing on us. A lot of movies out there about dragons. You need to go watch them. Mm -hmm. Number three. The blade can blind the eyes of its enemy if it's sharpened and polished. And you'll see a lot of the soldiers just always polishing, cleaning, sharpening, even with just a rock. The edge of the sword, wiping it clean, getting it ready for battle. 
Number four, Excalibur, its handle may be very plain, may be very decorated, but the blade was always sharp, clean, ready to do battle. Number five, while holding the sword of the spirit, Excalibur, sort of speaking, one will feel its power, its strength coming into your arm. A lot of people will take that our words are as a spear, the sword of the spirit. We speak and we can cut and we can kill with our own words. Now that's a study. When you get hit by a sword, whether it's words or a real sword, you can be injured and you have to be healed. In many religions and faith, we're taught the power of our words. They can bless you or curse you. They can give you life or death, all from your words. Politics is what they call the bloodless sport. It's a sport. It's all with words. The sword of the spirit can come right out of your mouth. And it can cut, kill, injure other people by just what you say. Number six. This blade of Excalibur. This blade of the words of your mouth. Have great power. Life or death. Blessings or curses. You have to learn how to wield it. You can kill or protect. You can anoint. You can bless. It's a ceremonial sword, but it's a death instrument as well. But it can be used to protect, save and rescue, to kill, maim, destroy. You gotta study swords, the words of your mouth, your thoughts that come through your mouth. Number seven, the rewards of a sword can be just. In the right hands, your words can be powerful instruments of life, of healing, deliverance. It can bring life to a nation. Most of us don't have real swords and seem to do real battle anymore. But the sword of the mouth can bring life or death to nature, to people. When you pass a law in politics, government, rules for business, that's coming from here, out through your mouth, out through your hands, life or death, blessings or curses. And a nation will reflect its leader, its king. I say that all the time. It's, it's very easy to spot what kind of heart you have, what kind of sword you are wielding through your words. A sword can reward the just, the righteous. It can bring blessings to a family, it can raise you up, it can acknowledge you. You'll see still in some kingdoms, people will come before the king, they will kneel down. That's in honor and respect. Believe it or not, earthly kings are a shadow, a representation of the heavenly, godly king. We have to have some images. We have to have some examples of how we're to act spiritually. And you'll see them. The, the king will take his sword or a queen We've had lots of wonderful queens throughout history. They will take the sword of their office, tap the shoulders, tap the head, and they will bless them, anoint them, give them titles, give them recognition and honor through the sword. The sword is an extension of the rulership of a nation. 
A sword can destroy the unworthy. In battle, maybe, for your words. They're sharp. Mm -hmm. Number nine. When the sword Excalibur, we're still calling it, is removed from its scabbard, it will reveal who you really are. The blade will light up with light if you're righteous, and it will not light up if you are not righteous. Power will go into it. It could be a blade, though, that you're filled with lust and greed and hate. It's all about me and what I want or my family, or my faith, or my ancestors. Not about what the God you pray to wants. Not about other nations. The sword will reflect the light of your spirit, the light of your soul, when you hold it. And that's the same true as your words, your looks, your nonverbal communication comes out through you. Your soul and your physical body become the sword of your spirit out into the earthly world. And you, your soul, your physical body becomes one of light, truth, and righteousness and justice for all of humanity, for all of nature, to defend and protect. Or it's one of greed and death and lust, pride and arrogance and unrighteousness. sexually immoral, following traditions and cultures. And the blade never lights up except in darkness. Number 10, for Excalibur in your hands, if you are unrighteous, Excalibur will make you pay the price of not being worthy. Many tried to pull the Excalibur out of the sword and the stone. Couldn't do it. Excellent movie to watch is The Legend of Arthur. A lot of great movies about it. People tried to pull it out of the stone, but only one young man could do it, the righteous one. So you might have never held a sword in your hand. Never used your words to heal people, deliver nations, speak righteous judgments. You've never laid your hands on somebody and blessed them. Your words are only curses and of death, destruction, lust, greed. Trying to protect yourself, what you have, with no concept of what really happening. Number 11. When you are not righteous and you are not chosen and your heart is not right and your spirit is not right, Excalibur will never be in your hands. Your words will never bring life to others. You will never be sent into other nations spiritually to rid the land of the enemy and Expel the darkness. You'll never be allowed to speak to nature and the water and the animals to bring life. You will be unusable to the creator, the designer of Excalibur, the sword of the spirit. You'll be serving a God and a creator, but not the one of righteousness, not the one that loves nations, people and women righteousness and justice and it will be a righteous king and Excalibur will bring forth its power and light out of your words into your government when you stand there will be a light around you people will be in awe of you they will not know how to deal with you whether you make comments on LinkedIn you will draw people to your, from your words or comments. They will want to follow you. They'll want to talk to you, but maybe they can't, so they'll find some other way. Excalibur is your words. It's the light. It's the sword you carry by the Creator. 
to bring forth freedom to nations. I'm going to tell you a secret. I just went on a spiritual mission to two nations to free it of darkness, ignorance, and to put a king on the thrones. It was not for me to be the king. I was his sage, his priest, his prophet. I stood next to him as his queen, but he sat on the throne. In other nations, I might, the god of Excalibur might put a female to show the enemy that women can rule. We know about Queen Elizabeth I, Queen Victoria in England, Elizabeth II in England. Mighty women have been rulers over nations and people and armies. Don't you ever count out a female biologically or spiritually. When God wants them raised up to take a nation and to help the women and children and to show the enemy that you cannot hold a woman back. God will use a woman. So you be encouraged. Do you carry Excalibur? Does he come out of your mouth? Can you wield the sword of the spirit and bring blessings? Or do you have another kind of sword that brings death and destruction and does not care for life? But it only brings lust and greed. Are you thinking of other nations? Or just yours? You, your family, holding on to power? and not willing to give it away. You cannot have anything more till you give away what you already have, and you give up what you want in the natural, whether it's marriages, sex, money, till you can let it go and desire what the creator of Excalibur wants, a world filled with light, joy, and peace spiritually. And the enemy, the darkness, the slave masters, the taskmasters are dispelled. And new life comes to people and nature. Then you will be wielding Excalibur, the sword of the spirit, created by its creator for your hand, the king, that he has anointed out of Genesis 1, 26 through 28, that all of nature would bow to you, that you would carry all authority and dominion on earth for the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of paradise, that you would be a mighty one against unrighteousness, wickedness, lust, greed, unrighteous business practices, you would help free women and children from abuse, trafficking. You would sit on a throne with righteousness and light guiding you. So, do you carry Excalibur? Are you worthy of having it? Are your words ones of life and blessings? Can you speak to other nations and to nature? Can Excalibur reveal its power and glory through you so that nations are set free? That's my question to you in this wonderful teaching of the Kingdom Kingdom series. We'll continue and we'll pick up in more. There's so much more to learn about being a king how important your words are about Excalibur, the sword of the spirit and how you're to be. Need a lot of training, young one. Whether you're a male or a female, king just means ruler. That's all. And don't you ever forget, women are just as equal. And I'll see you again on the next spiritual teaching video here on the Hidden Kingdoms in the playlist called the King and Kingdom series. All right, bye-bye. Got my eyes on you to see how you and Excalibur might be doing. All right, talk to you later. Bye-bye.